Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the SIP that is session initiation protocol and I'm going to discuss about the interview questions and answers which you can prepare before going for a Cisco voice interview. So let's start it. So first question would be like everybody would ask what is the simple call flow in your SIP environment? like how the call flow works in SIP. So let me just uh, give you a brief about the, like, like I will just show you with the help of an example and then you will be able to make it yourself what should be the call flow in the SIP environment. So here you can see this is LSS soft phone. This is the proxy server atlanta.com. This is biloxy.com and this is Bob's IP phone. So main thing, uh, if somebody is asked, what is a simple call flow in your SIP environment, then you can just imagine there are only two parties, like I can say, uh, just a moment. So like I can say, <clears throat> the first is Alice's smartphone, Alice's smartphone, this one. Another one is Bob's IP phone. You can you can forget these things like atlanta.com proxy and biloxy.com. So if somebody asks, what is simple call flow, then you can say, uh, Alice's soft phone, that is, you can say this is as of now, uh, we can say this is user agent client and this Bob's IP phone, this is your user agent server. If nothing is in between, like if these proxy servers are not there, then this is client, this is server. So there will be an invite message from this user agent client to the user agent server. The first invite being sent from Alice's soft phone to the Bob's IP phone. And then there will be a response that is a hundred trying from the Bob's IP phone to the LSS soft phone that is from user agent server to the user agent client. So that is a provisional response. It's not a final response, right? And after that hundred trying, it will get a hundred, 180 ringing as you can see it here and 180 ringing. And then you will be having a 200 okay. So this is the simple flow uh, from the Bob's side. So once UAC receives the 200, okay, it will send an acknowledgement, okay, I received this. So UAC will send an acknowledgement to the Bob's IP phone. And after that media session will establish. And like if Alice's soft phone uh, just disconnect, then it will be a buy message from user agent client. And if Bob's IP phone disconnect the phone, then there will be a message from the Bob's IP phone. As here you can see, Bob's press the discount button first and then that's why there is a buy message from Bob's and then there will be a reply of buy that is 200 OK. Right? So this is a simple call flow. Now here in this diagram you can see there are two proxy servers in between. Atlanta.com proxy and the Biloxy.com proxy. So there is a first invite from LSS soft phone. This first inv initial invite goes to Atlanta.com proxy and as soon as atlanta.com proxy receives an invite, it will send a hundred trying message to the LSS soft phone, right? Why it is sending a hundred trying at that particular point of time? Because if it doesn't send the hundred trying, then LSS soft phone will again send the invite because LSS soft phone doesn't know whether that invite reached out to uh, atlanta.com proxy or not. So that's why hundred trying is mandatory. So at the same time, uh, this proxy server will send an invite to the another proxy server and then this proxy server will send an invite to the Bob's IP phone, right? And 100 trying will be there for sure, right? So after this 100 trying, once Bob's IP phone sends 180 ringing to the biloxy.com proxy, only then this proxy server will send 180 ringing to the Atlanta and then it will send it to the LSS soft phone. In the same way, once Pops IP phone sent 200 OK to the proxy, then this proxy sent it 200 OK to the another one, and then it goes to the LSS soft phone. And at last, there will be an acknowledgement from LSS soft phone to the Bob's IP phone. Now, here is one more question. Like earlier, it, the invite was sending, invite was going from LSS soft phone to proxy, and then proxy to another proxy, and then to Bob's IP phone. But when the acknowledgement is there, like when acknowledgement should be there, why it is going directly from LSS soft phone to the Bob's IP phone? 
because at this particular point of time, Alice's soft phone knows the uh, I can say the location and the details of Bob's IP phone. That's why it is sending ACK directly to the Bob's IP phone instead of sending to Atlanta.com proxy or Biloxi.com proxy. Because earlier, Alice's doesn't know where is Bob or the where is the Bob's IP phone. So that's why it was sending it to proxy. Now, Alice's uh, know all the details of Bob's IP phone, like everything. That's why it is sending directly acknowledgement to the Bob's IP phone. And then media session starts. Right. The next question would be, what are the minimum required header fields in any SIP message or what are the mandatory header fields we can say in any SIP message? SIP message like there are many header fields. If, if you uh, ever troubleshoot the SIP message, if you ever troubleshoot the SIP thing like SIP protocol and you know uh, what are the or what are all the messages in SIP environment, then you will be able to give the answer to this question. So let me let me show it to you. So these are the mandatory header fields or we can say the required header fields, the via header field, max forward header fields, to, from, call ID and the CSEC number. These are the minimal required header fields in, in the SIP message, right? And you should know about every single message in your SIP. Only then you will be able to troubleshoot it. Right, so let me uh, give you a brief about these via max forwards to from call ID and the CSEC. Like not in much in depth, but at least in detail, so that you can just answer it. Right, so via message here you can see the first one via message. It contains uh, this SIP. It is showing the version, the protocol, the TCP or UDP and all these things in max forwards to from call ID and C6. Here you can see, let me just give you a brief in detail, like, like a small detail via uh, for a via message. So when your user agent client, that is LSS soft phone is sending something like when it creates a request, it will surely or it uh, or we can say it is a mandatory thing that he needs to insert a via header field into that request, right? And this via header field contains these things like first is the protocol name here, you can see SIP, and then this 2.0 is a, your protocol version. And then you have this UDP, that is a transfer type, whether it's a TCP or UDP here, you can see whether it is a TCP or UDP. Then you have this thing, pc33.atlanta.com, that is either it, it's a host name or it should be a IP address with a with the protocol number, right? So here it is showing the host name, but it can be uh, it can be an IP address with the protocol port number, right? So these information should be there in the via message, and this information mainly allows uh, the recipient, which is your user agent server, it, in, it allows the recipient of the request to return SIP responses to the correct device, right? So it allows your recipient to send, to return SIP responses to the correct device, right? Then we have this max forward 70. What does it mean? This means it can go to a maximum of 70 hops. As here you can see, the max forwards header field serves to limit the number of hops a request can transition the way to its destination. And it is decremented by one at each hop, right? Then next is from and to. So it doesn't mean uh, the from, that means LS is sending a request to Bob. So it, it doesn't, mean uh, like if it is sending to any other, this field will change, no. From and to will be same throughout the message, right? What does this to field means? What does this from field means? Let's see. The two header fields specified the logical recipient. It does, it's showing, it's saying logical recipient of the request or the address of record, the user. 
right and there is no tag parameter since the dialog is not established yet so i hope you know what is dialog what is transaction and i will i will come to that point as well so there is a question like what is the difference between transaction and dialog as well so if you know what is dialog then you should be able to like answer this question right so there is no tag parameter since the dialog is not established yet what does this from the from header fields indicates the logical identity of the initiator of the request so who is initiating the request right so ls is the optional display name if this is an optional this is not a mandatory right and the tag parameter identifies this user agent a peer of the dialog this is a peer right that's why the tag is there next thing that is a caller id so this caller id field serves as a unique identifier and must be the same for all requests and response sent by either ua in a dialog so this call id should be unique because you will be able to troubleshoot the issue only with the help of this call id like if you are on your gateway and you are uh, debugging zip messages it contains so many calls how how would how you will be able to identify your call and on the and the path as well and the servers as well right you will be able to see from and to on many messages like invite under trying when it is ringing or or other messages 200 okay right this call id from this call id you will be able to identify your call in on on all these calls right and then we have this csec number that is 314159 invite what does this csec number means this csec header field serves as a way to identify and order the transactions it consists of a sequence number and a method matching that of the request like if there is a request coming from invite coming from a client to the server the first message would be invite and that invite message contains this csec number this number would be a uh, random it it shows a csec and this field i did this field shows that this is a csec of the invite right if it is of any other thing then it will show the csec 314159 and the other thing right like under trying or, or or maybe something else right so i hope now you know what are the mandatory header fields correct so next question would be is the to and from header fields define the direction of the zip message i believe you will be able to answer this question as i already discussed about this in the previous question so the answer would be no the to and from header fields in zip are defined to signify the route of the request not the route of the message right okay the next question would be what is sip proxy server like we discussed in the first question like uh, if a call is from alice software to the bobs software there are two proxy servers involved in between those so what is that sip proxy server so a sip proxy server sits inside the center of sip message which you already saw earlier in the first question right what's the main purpose of this sip it receives the message and forwards them however it doesn't set up or terminate sessions so this sip proxy server will not be able to set up or terminate the sessions what this sip proxy server will do this proxy server will receives message chain it or forward it right then we have how the proxy server is different from a user agent or a gateway so a proxy server is different from a gateway or person or a user agent in three ways this proxy server doesn't issue request so as you saw earlier it is not issuing a request it is just receiving it or forwarding it right proxy server doesn't issue request it only responds to request from person marketers right it it is only responding it to the request which is coming from the other like ip phones or any other proxy servers right and a cancel request is an exception to this rule you need to uh, have this thing in your mind a cancel request is an exception to this rule right a proxy uh, the next next thing is a proxy server has no media abilities right and this proxy server does no longer parse message bodies it relies completely on the message header fields right 
So you need to keep these things in your mind if somebody asks how the proxy server is different from a user agent or a gateway, right? Next thing is what is redirect server? So redirect server is a type of SIP server also that responds the request. However, doesn't forward the request. It just responds to the request, but it will not forward the request. That is a redirect server, right? Like proxy server, a redirect server uses a database or area provider to look up a user, right? And the location records is sent returned to the caller in a redirectional response that is for 3xx, which after the egg concludes the transaction, right? That is a redirect server. Next thing is, is the ACK sent to non 2xx final response is considered to be a part of same transaction as invite? I hope you're getting this question. Is the ACK sent to non 2xx final response? Here we are talking about non 2xx final response. Is the X sent to non 2xx final response is considered to be a part of same transaction or a different one, like a same transaction as invite, right? Let's see the answer. Yes, the act dispatched to non 2xx final response is considered to be a part of equal transaction as invite, right? Act request reuses the same ID, same department ID as invite. Only an act dispatched in reaction to a 200 OK is considered a separate transaction with a unique branch ID. Right, so the act dispatched to non to access final response is considered to be a part of the same transaction, but act, act dispatch in reaction to 200 OK, that will be a separate transaction. I hope you must heard that act is uh, neither a request nor is a response, but act is a normal single transaction, right? I hope you, you know that. So this would be the answer for that. Is the X sent to non to access final response considered as same transaction as invite, right? The next thing also an act to a non to XX very last response is a hope by way of hope reaction. It no longer a give up to stop reaction, correct? So next would be, what is the significance of update method? Like, if there is a message which is showing update, what is the significance of that? That means if you want to update something, then that's why it is. it will send an update. Here, the update approach is used to modify the state of a consultation without changing the kingdom of the conversation, right? It just wanted to modify the state, not wanted to change the kingdom of conversation, like, right? So a session is set up in SIP, the usage of an invite request in an offer and survey. Typically, a session provide is made in the invite and a solution made in response to the invite, right? And in a long time session, a re-invite is used to replace consultation parameters. However, in pending consultation, invite sent, but no final reaction obtained, right? Invite already sent, but there is no final reaction and you want to update something. Then update is used to replace consultation parameters. Basically, update is used to perform QS and negotiate give up to quit attributes previous to session establishment, right? So invite is sent, but there is no final reaction obtained. Then you can send an update message. But if that is already happened, then you can send a re-invite if you want to replace the parameters. A re-invite is used. Right. Next, we have what is the significance of a PRAC method? PRAC. This is very, very, very important topic, I can say, or I can say the thing which is important in SIP environment that is this PRAC. Right. So the PRAC technique is used to acknowledge receipt of reliably transported provisional responses. So I hope you know provisional responses, that is one XX, it can be 100 trying, 180 ringing, 181, 182, 183, anything, right? Those are all the provisional responses. So PRAC is used to give a response to those provisional responses, right? 
So the reliability of 2xx, 3xx, 4, 5, and 6xx responses to invites is finished using the ACK technique, right? So if you want to response to something like which, which is like in 2xx, 3xx, 4, 5, or 6xx response, then that will be a ACK message. That will not be a PRAC. So PRAC would only be for the provisional responses, which is 1xx. However, in instances in which a provisional reaction inclusive of 100 and 180 ringing, 100 that is under trying and 180 ringing, is crucial in determining the decision country, it may be essential for the receipt of a provisional reaction to be confirmed, right? You, you can ignore this line. That, that's not a, like a, a good one to tell it in an interview, right? So the first thing that is PRAC is used to acknowledge receipt of provisional responses. For all these responses, there will be a ACK message for two, three, four, five, and six XX responses. For responses to invites, is finished using the ACK technique. Now, the PRAC method applies to all provisional responses besides the 100 trying reaction. That's never reliably transport, right? So PRAC method is applied to all provisional responses besides 100 trying because that is never a reliably transport. Why it is not a reliably transported? Because as soon as you are sending an invite message, it the second party will throw a 100 trying message at that particular point of time. It will not wait if it if it gets the invite message, it will just send a hundred rank. So that's not a reliable transport. That's why it is saying uh, the prac method applies to all besides hundred rank. But if you want a prac for the hundred rank, then you can do that configuration on your gateway on your uh, like on your CUCM. You can do that configuration that you want. Uh, you want a prac for all 1xx messages, right? So there is an option on CUCM where you can uh, configure whether you want a prac for all 1xx messages, right? Or you want a prac for 1xx messages which contains SDP. The second thing. And the third, if you want to disable the prac. There are three options in the drop down on the CUCM, if you want to configure it, that would be under SIP rel 1xx options. This is the option where you can configure this prac. So three options are there in the drop down. The first one would be if 1xx contains SDP, right? Second one would be for all 1xx messages, and the third one would be disabled, right? Here it's saying a prac is generated by UAC while a provisional response has been acquired containing a RSEC reliable collection variety and a supported 100 rel header. And if you are debugging messages, then you will be able to see this option that is supported 100 rel header. That will be in the first initial invite that it supports and it, it will give a prac, right? The PRAC reproduction, the quantity within the RSEC and the CSEC of the response in a PRAC header, right? The next would be, uh, what is the significance of info method? Info method is just an information kind of thing. So info method is utilized by a consumer agent to ship name signaling records to every other person agent with which it has an established media consultation, right? This is not like a re-invite so since it does no longer change the media. The request is give up to give up and is in no way initiated by proxies, right? And proxy will usually forward an info request. It smells as much as like you said to check to see if the conversation is valid. So info requests for unknown dialogues get hold of a 481 transaction slash dialogue doesn't exist reaction, right? The next would be, what is the significance of message method? So message technique is used to transport IM, like immediate message is the usage of SIP. It typically consists of short message exchange in close to actual time where participants engage in a communication. And 
messages can be sent inside a conversation or out of doors of a conversation but they do no longer set up a conversation by means of themselves the next method that is a uh, the next question would be that is what is the significance of notify method this is an important one the notify subscribe these questions are very important right what is the significance of notify method so the notify approach is utilized by a user agent to convey records approximately the occurrence of a selected event, right? The notify approach is utilized by user agent to convey records approximately the occurrence of a selected event. Notify is constantly dispatched within a dialogue while a subscription exists between the subscriber and the notifier, right? And this a notify request usually gets a 200 OK reaction if a 481 dialog transaction doesn't exist response is received the subscription is automatically terminated and no greater notifies are dispatched right notify requests incorporate an event header discipline indicating the package and a subscription state header field indicating the present day kingdom of the subscription so the next question would be what is the significance of subscribe method so subscribe and notify works together we can say right so what is the significance of subscribe method this subscribe method is used by user agent to set up a subscription for the purpose of receiving notifications via notify method right about a selected so subscribe and notify will work together if you want to subscribe something then you will get a notification of notify right then a hit subscription establishes a conversation among usc and us this subscription request carries an expires header area which indicates the preferred duration of the life of the subscription like uh, i hope you know the expire header field and after this time period passes the subscription is robotically terminated so once that time passes that subscription will 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 be terminated right and a server accepting a subscription returns a 200 OK reaction, additionally containing an expires header subject. And that expire timer can be same as the request which is in the subscribe method, right? There is no unsubscribe approach used in SIP. So if it subscribes something and there is expires uh, header message, after that timer completes, it will normally terminate that thing, right? But there is no subscribe thing, unsubscribe thing, like if it sends an unsubscribe that thing or not. No, there is not an unsubscribe approach in SIP as a substitute. A subscriber with expires zero timer, like in this, in the first subscribe message, subscribe method, it will send expires header field as a, uh, we can say 4,000 or 5,000 milliseconds, right? And if you want to terminate it, then you can another, uh, send another request as subscribe with expires zero. It requests the termination of a subscription and add, as a result, the conversation is ended, right? A termination subscription, either due to timeout or a termination request will result in a final notify indicating the subscription has been terminated. So once you send a subscribe message and after that particular timer expires, that is in, that is already written in the expire header field. Once the timer expires, it will send a notify indicating that the US subscription has been terminated. And if you terminate in between by sending a subscribe message again with the expires zero, then it will also send a notify message that your subscription has been terminated right then we have a refer method so what is the significance of refer method so the refer approach is used by a person agent to request some other agent to access a uri or url right this is recognized by uri or url within required refer to header subject so the header would be a refer to that means you are referring to something a refer request can be sent either internal or outdoor in a present dialogue, right? It can be internal or it can be outdoor, right? Then we have, what is the significance of options method? So this, the options technique is used to query a consumer agent or server about its capabilities and find out its cutting edge availability. 
that means if you want to ask something from the user agent server or the other party then you can use this method that is options technique because you don't know the capabilities of the other end server so this option technique is used to query an agent or server about its capabilities the capabilities like the codec thing or all other things as well like about its capabilities and find out its availability right then we have the cancel method so what is the significance of cancel method the cancel technique is used to terminate pending searches or call tries like if you send an invite but you are not getting something like you are not getting a response then and you want to cancel it then you want you just send a cancel message right it can be generated by way of both user retailers or proxy servers provided that one xx response containing a tag has been received but no very last reaction has been received right if you want to cancel the first initial invite like if you send an invite and you are not getting a response and you want to cancel it then there is a method of sending a cancel like this is also a cancel method which you sent it right and a person agent confirms the cancellation with the 200 okay reaction to the cancel and replies to the invite with a 487 request terminated response like these are two agent and agent and server we can say this sends an invite message right and it is just sending 100 trying and one iterating but it's not sending 200 okay at that particular point of time then at that particular point of time you send a cancel message to this one right once you send a cancel message and in the meantime maybe you will send a 200 okay as well right and he is just confirming like a person agent confirms the cancellation with 200 okay react so this 200 okay would be for this cancel request right and replies to this invite this first invite the reply would be for this invite is a 487 request terminated this one so uh this would be the end of the questions ready to the sip if you have any queries and if you have any other questions you can just let me know in the comment section right i will surely answer your queries and if you want to schedule a time with me you can just go to this link topmate.io slash rohan underscore vermani and there are a few of the membership that i'm offering you can go and check it out by clicking on the join channel on the youtube i hope you really like this video please like share and subscribe my channel if you really like it and please press the bell icon so that you will receive notifications of my upcoming videos thank you